Ladies and gentlemen, please do not be alarmed, but we have it on good authority that the mysterious severed hands has escaped. If your front door is unlocked, it's quite possible it's crawling around your living room floor as I speak. Do not be afraid. It actually feeds on fear. Do not attempt to remove it yourself, as it is evil. Do not try to feed it. Do not talk to it or tease it. Do not attempt to read it a children's book such as if you give a mouse a cookie. And for heaven's sake, don't look at it. If you do choose to do anything at all, just remember that it's the Not Too Late Show with our very special guest star, Saladin. Yay! Hello, everyone, and welcome to our February 16th edition of the Not Too Late Show. I'm your host, Henry L. Two Sheds Demond. We are broadcasting from the second floor of the library at the Monte Cassino Monastery in lovely Italy. Oh, hey, pick me up a pizza the next time you go out, okay? Buongiorno, Carrie. Did you just flip me off in Italian? <laughs> of course not. I said, I said good day, Carrie. Oh, okay. Uh, Carrie Kaufman, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. So how do you say hi in Italian? Ciao. Are you leaving already? <laughs> What? <laughs> anyway, you said ciao. Let me <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we have a great show for you all tonight. Uh, uh, we'll be looking at uh, February 16th in history, uh, playing a game of only jerks hate history, and maybe even mentioning a book or two, uh, because this is the Not Too Late Show after all. <sighs> Carrie. Yes, I, I I believe you filed a request to make a Doctor Who-related mention. Mm -hmm. Your request has been approved. Oh, goody. I thought uh, Doctor Who fandom went out with the RCA color track, but I am apparently sadly mistaken. All right, Hank. <laughs> first off, it is the Sci-Fi Expo. And face it, Hank, nerddom never dies. <laughs> All right. Well, last week was the Sci-Fi Expo at the Irving Convention Center. Unfortunately for me, it has not happened yet. At the time of this recording, I am still rebel rousing. It's like the, a Back to the Future kind of thing, right? It, it is. It is. It's like I'm talking about something. It's not happened for me, but it's happened for you. And we're talking about it last week. And I'm still rebel rousing with the volunteers on our Facebook group page. And as I mentioned on last week's episode, I am really looking forward to meeting Karen Gillen, Sylvester McCoy, Carl Urban. And I will happily be tweeting and Instagramming this as it's happening, as I'm allowed to. As you know, I am a fan of Doctor Who and the Lord of the Ring Hobbit movies, and those three people that I just named played major roles in those. And Mr. Urban is also, he played Dr. McCoy in the new Star Trek film. I'm also really anxious about meeting Stephen Amell, who plays Oliver Queen, a.k.a. the Green Arrow. But you know who, Hank, you know who Bruce, my husband, is really looking forward to meeting. Oh, yeah? I don't know. Well, no, no, no clue. No clue? <laughs> well, I forgot to mention this last week. He's going to meet Peter Mayhew. Do you know who that is? Uh, the name sounds familiar. Uh, tall name sounds tall familiar? guy? Yes, he's the guy who played Chewbacca. Okay, yes. All right. Yes, and he's going to get his picture taken with him. And all. Uh, oh, awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't know if he's wearing the Chewbacca suit or not yet. But So if you check out my Twitter account, at Kerry Kaufman, uh, my Instagram or my Soundscriber feeds at Calliader, K-A-L-I-A-D-D-E-R. You will be able to see all the excitement for yourself. Go check it out. And I think you can also check out if you go to at Dallas Comic Con or hashtag Dallas Comic Con via Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can see what the excitement was about all the way around. Or at the very least, you can gear up for 2014 Comic Con in May. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh. Well, well, now that we've established what's happening in the future, and, and uh, this is a show <laughs> about the future. past, right? And now is the time during the show where we fast forward to the present day, and you announce some things regarding the, the program, our program. Oh, do we have to? All right, just a second. Okay, well, if you are listening attentively to the sound of my voice, you are either listening via our website, nottoolateshow.com, or via TFOK Radio at Spreaker.com slash Radio. Now, there are some other ways you can listen or even watch us. You can check us out at Soundscriber, Instagram, and even YouTube. After listening to our show, hop on over to YouTube, check out some behind-the-scenes footage of us recording these shows, 
And as always, look for our handle, Not Too Late Show. Now, Hank has a dream to be a supermodel for the midlife gap. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to get through this without laughing. <laughs> Sorry, Redo. I didn't write it. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> okay. Hank has a dream to be a supermodel for the midlife gap. But until he can make that happen, we are recording these podcasts for you, our faithful listeners. And we need your help. Please visit our site, nottoolateshow.com, and click on Donate. The donation goes through PayPal, so it's fairly painless. Also, if you have a business you would like to promote, you can contact us to promote your business on our episodes and or on our website. So please, be a dear and donate a few bucks so Hank can go live his dream. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, very nice. Thank you. So are we ready now to introduce our special guest? Let's do it. Hank and Carrie, the special guest for February 16th is a Kurdish military leader from the Middle Ages who was defeated by Richard the Lionhearted during the Third Crusades for Jerusalem. Here from Damascus in Salim Adun Youssef Anab Ayi, also known as Saladin. <laughs> I could, I could listen. I could Love listen it. to the whole song. <laughs> As the Muslim was a stand-in, have a seat there, Mister Dean. Hank, I must say I enjoy your show. Your Christian friends are very nice. You know, Carrie, I have one wife. I have room for three more. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Except your refusal, I'm... my little frosty date. Now, now, now! This is a this is a family show. That's right. This is a hey. You're finally getting it. <laughs> y- yes, uh, Mr. Salad. Um, I under- I know that your introduction alluded to your loss uh, to uh, to Richard the Lionhearted in eleven something, and uh, that's probably a little unfair. So, so why don't you tell us a little about your accomplishments? Well, I founded the Ayyubid dynasty in Syria. Oh, you did that? That's really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. What's an Ayubid? <laughs> <laughs> you American what? women are so hysterical. <laughs> well, well, Gary, to put it in a better context, I understand that that uh, uh, Mr. Saladin here did did quite a bit to build schools and infrastructure, and um, that uh, you were able to unite the varying sects of the Islamic faith, and that you were a, a, a Sufi, which uh, I understand means that you were among those of the Islamic faith to attain a higher level of spirituality. Yes. This is why you can talk to me all day long, and my beard shall hardly quiver. <laughs> all right. can, can I insult you? Oh, uh, no. no <laughs> you but you just said. <laughs> oh, dude. He's carrying a scimitar. So. <laughs> ah, got it. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Franks during the Crusades uh, held you in high regard, and uh, I've read quite about, a bit about you, and, and you went well out of your way to make peace with the Crusaders. And I heard that you were also a smart guy, so maybe you can beat me at Only Jerks Hate History. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, now we present Only Jerks Hate History. Who said that? Is that a woman's voice? It's completely enchanting. It's not really a game show about nothing, but more so a contest about something. You might win knowledge, you might even earn entertainment value. I'm usually not a betting man, but I will give you 30 dinars if you are victorious in today's contest. Hey, Hank, that's pretty good, since you haven't had your dinar yet. <laughs> I could use a good dinar. There you go. Now, Mr. Mr. Din, uh, where did you get that neato weedo pointy hat? This old thing? Oh, I picked it up in Alexandria. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, let's start the music then. <laughs> All righty. So this week's theme is very early exploration of the United States. Okay. So probably a little further back than the 200 years that our country has been around, give or take a few. Okay. All right. All right. Question number one. The idea that the earth was round was an original thought of Columbus. Is this true or false? Mr. Dean? 
True. Uh, the original concept is it was from Columbus. The idea that the Earth was round was an original thought of Columbus. That is false. True. Okay, false. And y'all are correct. Uh, the ancient Greeks knew that the Earth was spherical, and this knowledge was commonplace among scholars in the Middle Ages. Yes, yes. A fellow by the name of Aristophanes sneeze. Um, Aristophanes sneeze. Yeah, Arist, 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 I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. He actually he actually name. calculated the circumference of the Earth. Really? Yeah. Was very, he close? Yes, he was within a hundred miles. Are you kidding? No, that is cool. How do you figure that out? Just triangulation or mirrors? Mirrors. <laughs> the answer to everything is mirrors. <laughs> all righty. Number two. All, all done with mirrors. All done. <laughs> Who was the first European explorer to discover North America? Was it Eric the Red, Leif Erikson, Christopher Columbus, or Geoffrey Chaucer? Columbus. Um, it was one of the first two. Eric the Red or Leif Erikson? Oh, I know whichever one I pick is going to be the wrong one. <laughs> no peeking. He was a, he was a Viking. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're Al- correct on that. Al- allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> uh, oh, doggone it. I think... It, mm, Leif Erikson. It was Leif Erikson. Oh. Always go with your yeah. instincts. <laughs> All right. So er- no... Re- er- Eric the Red was like an actual bad guy, I oh. think. I think he was like one of the, you know, one of your stereotypical mm-hmm. Vikings. And yes. Like pillaged and yes. stuff. Conquered. Er- Erickson, Erickson was a little more cerebral, I think. Oh, was he? Yeah, he actually like tried oh. tried to go places. That was that was his big deal. So he probably tried to get to North America on purpose, or let's go that way. Yes, I think you, that's a fair way to put it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, next question: Where did the Spanish establish their first permanent settlement in North America? Was it Saint Augustine, Miami, New Orleans, or Myrtle Beach? Saint Augustine. <laughs> Sound like he, a man with land. I know he's, he must have some connection. Well, you know the the Arabs were in Spain for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, Saint Augustine. I have to concur. It is Saint Augustine. Yeah. Well, you know, I think this month I really picked easy questions. Y'all have not had a whole lot of problems. <laughs> you have just been on it this uh, wh- this time. Where did you get the Where did you get these questions from? These questions came from I think it was fun quizzes. Okay. I think that's where I got it. Fun quizzes. Yes, fun quizzes. Okay. And so, and I'll have the I don't remember the exact website, but I will post that. In the uh, post. Yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's down in the description. If you're watching this on NotTooLateShow.com, it's down in the description. If you're wa- listening to this on TFOK, you're crap out of luck. Go to NotTooLateShow.com. <laughs> All right. So final question. Okay. All right. What was the name of the first English child born in the new world? Was it Elizabeth Hayden? Haddon? Had H-A-D-D-E-N. I guess Haddon. Molly Ringwald? <laughs> Not the answers I selected. Virginia Slim. <laughs> okay. I think I picked this question for the answers. But, for, <laughs> but there is a reason why I did pick this question. Okay. Um, or was it Virginia Dare? Do I need to repeat the question again? Well, no, <laughs> that like, won't be. Well, not for me. Molly Ringwald. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's pretty in pink. Yeah. Uh, the Arabs were doing other things at this time, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, he's going to be oblivious. Uh, Virginia Dare. You are correct. It is Virginia Dare. Right. Um, now, a little tidbit about this, and this is the other reason why I picked this question. Virginia Dare was the first English child born in the New World. But when the supply ship returned, all they found was a vacant fort with the word Croatia. Croatoan, Croatan. Croatan, carved on a tree. Mm-hmm. The fate of the settler, settlers to this day is pure conjecture. Well, uh, I, it would have to be because they found no trace of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Vir, yeah, Virginia Dare was the was the first uh, uh, European that, that we know of on record that was born 
in 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 the New World. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were on uh, an island. I think it was well, it was Roanoke Island, which is off off coast of uh, of uh, North Carolina, and it's uh, it, it's actually it actually precedes Jamestown. Oh wow! Which, which which it was just like 1585, and which, yeah. which is amazing to me because we always we're always taught that Jamestown was the first attempted settlement. Right, right. right. Well, there was an attempted settlement uh, in on Roanoke Island, but they were not successful. Uh, well, apparently not. <laughs> um, and actually, the girl I cannot remember if Virginia Dare was actually captured. If there was some record that she was captured and taken. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened was the, and this is interesting, there was an Indian by the name of Mosanto or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, who was a Croatan. And okay, he, for, it, what it, is it, a Croatan? It's, it's just an Indian tribe. Oh, okay, okay. It's an Indian Indian nation or Indian tribe, um, that just a you know a specific category of, of, of Indian. Mm-hmm. And because, um, you know, they, they were all in different different tribes. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of intertribal wars and stuff like that. A lot of different pockets, like so um, th- this Monsanto guy was um, uh, uh, he he actually uh, got baptized, and then a week later Virginia Dare was baptized, and there were Indians who were witnesses to this baptism. Okay. So um, now I don't remember what happened. I don't remember whether she was just assumed that she was captured when that boat came back, or whether mm-hmm. she was captured ahead of time, and, there, and then that was documented. But yes, that is correct. They came back, and the only evidence was that the the word Croatan was right. carved into a tree. So it's assumed that the Croatans captured all of them. And so basically, when when the supply ship was there, there was a family there. When they left and they came back, they were gone. They were gone. And yeah. so there's really no. Well, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a family. I mean, it was a settlement. It was probably you know thirty, thirty or forty, thirty, forty, fifty pe- people. Okay. And uh, and they were all and no trace all, of where all, they went. All kaput. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it, and it's it, you know it, it, it's that's why I think it's essential to to break down mm-hmm. the, these tribal names because there were some tribes that were very friendly right there were and then there were other tribes that were du- totally duplicitous mm-hmm. and you know uh, this is probably one of those cases where it's like did we only we only had we we could only we were in a position I say we the English were only in such a position to trade only certain things in exchange for food. Right. You know, the, the, the English people were on the defensive. You know, they had to learn how to, you know, they had to learn how to fend, fend for themselves. And, and the only way they could do that was from the Indians. So right. that, so what they, they had to offer in return was, you know, not, 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 not yeah. much. So I think the Indians either got sick of that or there was enough intertribal Jealousies and things like that. That they took things in their own hands. Yeah. What do you think about this, Mr. Dean? Fabulous. <laughs> there you go. The man's got it. <laughs> yeah, like like I say, they were doing other things. The Arabs were doing other things. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, you were, and then uh, now tell me again, <laughs> sir. What what about what year do you come from? Uh twelve hundred. The twelve hundred. Oh, okay, so you predate what was going on here. You probably weren't even aware. So. <laughs> Like you said, you had your own thing going on. <laughs> All righty. They sure knew, sure knew about wars, though, I tell you. But a very good show. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that was really something. Um, hey, you know, <laughs> I, I, could, I could just do like many academic historians do and say, well, that's not my area of specialty. I, I only know about signet rings from the Jac- Jacob- <laughs> Jacobean era. <laughs> but you don't do that, Hank. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's another edition. It's the February 16th edition of History Strikes Back. Uh, well, okay. This is, this is the part of the program when I explore uh, a certain, head, you know, this day in history kind of stuff. Uh, there's lots of this day in history websites and, and resources and things out there, uh, calendar apps and such. Uh, but uh, I don't think uh, there's anything quite like what uh, what I what I produce here. Hmm. <laughs> no, there's nothing. There's nothing like you. They broke the mold. <laughs> uh, February sixteenth, in fifteen seventy, the Jewish community of Ferrara, which I think, which I believe, is in Italy, uh, the Jewish community of Ferrara suffered a very bad earthquake. Um, 
in 1968, the uh, Halleville, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Care, 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 care to take a guess as to what happened in Halleville, Alabama in 1968? The first 911 call? <laughs> I see nine eleven. What is? You did this to me on purpose. You are mean. I okay. Yes, that is correct. The first nine one one call. It was the first town or first township or whatever in the entire country to uh-huh. adopt. Oh, okay. Uh, adopt the nine one one method for for calling for emergency. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. What, so it's been around this, that long. It's been around since nineteen sixty eight. This is what I get. I wrote, I wrote it down, so you uh, you can't. Oh, miss. that's why you were laughing. You can't miss. <laughs> well, thank you yeah. for helping me out. <laughs> you know, I need all the help I can get. Well, nineteen sixty eight was a very eventful year, so you know, for, yeah. I, mean, I, I always I always have to mention something that happened in nineteen sixty eight. So, but they've had nine they they've had nine one one since nineteen sixty eight. I didn't realize it's been that long. Yeah. Well, I thought it was like since the well, 80s start, or something. It started in Halleville. I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. It didn't start in Baltimore or Chicago or anything like that. It started in Halleville, Alabama. So, so what happened in Halleville? Do you know what the 911 call was about? <laughs> that is a really good question. Good. Do I need the to look it up? Socratic method? Sure. <laughs> go, go right ahead. Don't ask me any questions while I'm... <laughs> In 1946, on February 16th, uh, was the, I guess it was the premiere of the Sikorsky helicopter. Um, in, in 1646 was the Battle of Torrington. Uh, this is another Oliver Cromwell English Civil War related thing. We've, we've talked about, we've talked about that kind of stuff. Uh, talked about the English Civil War and Oliver Cromwell. And um, I, I did do, try to do some research on Torrington, but uh, really all I've been able to find are um, tour guides. Like, you know, coming to England, well, visit the site of the Battle of Torrington. And that's about all I get. So <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell you how many people, how many people died or, or uh, uh, were burned or how many um, animals were used to, um, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Anyways. I, I don't know where that was going. Um, I've got... Uh, some other things here from uh, from historyorb.com. Let's, let's see how many things things wrong I can find. I'm just just playing. In 600 uh, on February 16th, six year 600, Pope Gregory the Great decrees um, saying "God bless you" as a as a uh, correct response to a sneeze. Really, that's apparently where it originated. Yeah. In 1804, Lieutenant Stephen Decatur raided Tripoli Harbor and burned the Navy, Navy frigate. And burns the Navy frigate Philadelphia after pirates seized it. And we did talk a little bit about this uh, in a previous show. Um, there was a, there's a, a a book called The Pirate Coast that I believe I reviewed on a previous show. And it talks about Jefferson and uh, uh, the uh, pirate invasion of the of the boat uh, off uh, off the coast of Tripoli in, in Libya. 1804 and the things that uh, Jefferson and and um, a and the first Marines it was about the first Marines. So that's that's where that comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, Ladies Home Journal began publishing in 1883 um, in Minnesota. Pekagama Dam, I guess Minnesota. It was a state record uh, for freezing cold temperatures in 1903. You really got a thing for the freezing cold temperatures. Hey, you know, you did it global last warming. month. You did it a few weeks ago. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to prove global warming is <laughs> harsh. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, so you? I don't know. With global warming, I don't know. You, you tell me. I, you tell me. Is I don't it, know. Is, it, is that global warming in when it's one freezing ear, I've cold? Got Al Gore on YouTube. My other ear got my husband going off on it. <laughs> so, so I'm somewhere in the middle of going. I just know it is really cold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't need Al Gore to tell me that it's cold or that it's hot, mm-hmm. and that it's getting hotter, and that the sun is really hot inside of it. You Millions do, of degrees. You do a good Al Gore. <laughs> you do, Bill Clinton. You'd have a conversation oh, with yourself. Not, oh, not right now, honey. <laughs> um, in 1937, uh, Jean Anouis Le Voyageur Sans Bagage premiered in Paris. 
That's a mouthful. Um, what is that? I I don't know. It sounded interesting, though. <laughs> wow, Hank. You realize this is a history show. You're supposed to be educating us, not well, just I'm, reading facts off a page. I, I, hey, I'm just... It was interesting. Okay. It's content. It happened. There it's you con- go. It's called content. It's content. Okay. Yeah, I, but I, you're excusing I, you're sticking I, to it. I leave it up to the listening audience to... You leave a lot up to a listening audience. Their own, their own research or their own imaginations, <laughs> depending on which they're better at. <laughs> well, if they're from TFOK, the imagination sector is not a problem. And believe me, they, 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 they never mind. In 1970, Joe Frazier TKO'd Jimmy Ellis in five rounds for a heavyweight boxing title. Wow. Yeah, how about that? 1964, Beatles made their second appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. Oh, so they, we had their first appearance last week. Yeah, I guess they did they come back the next week. It was either last week or the week. Did we talk about last week or the week before? I can't believe they would come back. They come back that quickly. Was it the but same I guess, year? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's the same year, 1964. Well, you got a stack of papers down there. You want to yeah, shuffle through it's, it? Or? It's in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's okay. You're already researching. I'm supposed to be leaving oh, I'm you done alone. I'm researching. I'm leaving. I'm oh, okay. Waiting for you to remember. Well, and then I have um, in 1899 cannot. Bry Rukflag Rigjavik for Iceland as their first football club. It's founded. You know how many names you've said in the past <laughs> five minutes that sound like either cuss words or body parts. <laughs> I, the hardest part of history is the names. Yes. Okay. What did you find? Well, I found out it wasn't an emergency. Uh, okay. It, it was basically a test call. Um, so I don't know how much of this you want me to read, but in the 1950s, uh, independent telephone companies were very common. Of course, we knew all that. Uh, in 1958, Congress called for a universal emergency number. At the time, the president's commission law enforcement, the FCC, started arguing over a single easy-to-remember number. Um this was due to a large volume of emergency calls going to telephone company operators. A person may be calling for emergency help while the operator was giving information on the number of Aunt Betsy in Louisiana. And, and, oh, now they're being funny. Yeah. For over 10 years, the idea was discussed and argued about among the different agencies who wanted to receive the calls. Police said they should answer all calls. The fire department felt they were the better choice. Some even felt the local hospital was the best answer. According to a report in the Fayette, Alabama Times record commemorating the 25th anniversary of the historic event, B.W. Gallagher, president of Alabama Telephone Company, said he was inspired by an article in the Wall Street Journal. He said that the president of AT&T and the FCC had announced that 911 would be the nationwide emergency number. Being a bit offended by the fact that the views of the independent telephone industry had been overlooked in this decision... Gallagher decided to make the Alabama Telephone Company the first to implement 911. Gallagher consulted with Robert Fitzgerald, inside plant manager, blah, blah, blah. In the early stages, the city fathers were, okay, and I'm going to put a link to this so you can read what all my blah, blah, (laughs) blahs were. Um, In the early stages, the city fathers were skeptical of 911 calls being answered at the police station. They, like persons in Congress, were afraid the city might not have the personnel qualified to answer all emergency calls. Uh, Haleyville, after all that to say, Haleyville, Alabama, introduced the nation's first 911 system, which was located at the police station. Alabama Speaker of the House, Rankin Fight, made the first call from another city hall room. It was answered by Congressman Tom Bevel on a bright red telephone located in the police department. Also on hand was Haleyville Mayor James Witt, Public Sur- Service Commission President Eugene Bull. Connor, and B.W. Gallagher. So on February 16th, 1968, the first 911 call was made. Okay. So it wasn't a wife beating then, huh? No, it was not a wife beating. Hmm. It Uh, might have been a a political beating, but (laughs) nothing exciting. (laughs) And I just read all that just basically to say they are basically they argued over it. Yeah. And finally came to a decision and then all huddled into a room and someone called from another room. Well, I have well. an emergency. Well. All right. Well, that that, uh, that wraps up another edition of uh, History Strikes Back. Carrie. Yes. What is the first rule of book club? Don't let anyone join the book club. Don't be silly now. The whole purpose of book club is that so that anyone can enjoy book club. 
even the guy who bullied you every day of your middle school career? <laughs> oh, 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 you mean Richard DeMarco? Mm-hmm. Sure, he can join, but uh, you know uh, he's probably swimming with the fishes right now. But you know what? If he's if he's in a witness protection program, sure. All right, have at it. The book I wanted to mention was uh, Stanley Carnow's In Our Image. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, we talked we talked a little bit about it. I mentioned mm-hmm. it in a previous show in the context of the Philippines and the typhoon that hit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I always like to take on these kinds of books as projects. Uh, for example, if there's a topic I'm not too familiar with to begin with, I can find one book and after spending some time with it, have a comfortable understanding of the topic. And uh, you know, Philippines is one of those is one of those areas is one of those topics. And I knew in high school, you know, Taft, the, mm-hmm. our, our, uh, the president that came after uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, he before he was president, he was the governor of the Philippines. And I knew that he went to the hot and sweaty Philippines, and he didn't it, it didn't help him take a call, take off any weight. He still weighed three hundred pounds when he right. came back. Um, and I knew Manila, you know, I, you know, Manila is the capital of the Philippines and that's where Manila folders come from. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> but, but oh, now, but now because of uh, Carno's, Carno's book, I, I know so much more and, uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's a good read and it's, it's well written. Um, mm-hmm. I, he's not really a, a historian that, uh, oh, uh, you know, like a, David McCullough or somebody like that, that, you know, that takes on long projects. And mm-hmm. he, I, I think he was, he was a diplomat, uh, who was very close to the Philippines in the eighties during the Marcos years and, and Corazon Aquino when she took over and, and he was and he was connected to Reagan and, and a lot of the diplomatic corps there, and so uh, and and he had some scholarly background. So I think he just found a topic that was yeah. you know he just wanted to essentially write a, a, a memoir and a good comprehensive study of of the Philippine Islands. Right. And I think it's a I think it's a a fine book, a a, a good read. I'm yet to get all the way through it <laughs> <laughs> because there's so it's sec- yeah. it's so segmented because okay. it's broken into the. You know, into the early history, uh, the you know, like the Native history, and then the uh, Spanish uh, American War, mm-hmm. and then and then some of the some of the diplomatic or, or uh, uh, oh, I guess you could say American imperialist uh, attitudes that, that that came after that, and it's and it's of particular interest because um, I, f- I find it interesting because I found the book interesting because it uh, it addresses American. I'm, Quoting imperialism, yeah. Okay. yeah, quote unquote imperialism, and Carno says numerous times in the book. He says, you know, you can call it imperialism, you can call Americans imperialist, mm-hmm. but <laughs> compared to other countries that were imperialistic at the close. time, they, it, no, it's not. It's not even. It's not the same thing. They were much, much more. I mean, now there were inhumane things that happened and, and atrocities committed by Americans. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, uh, comparatively, I mean, you know, wow, we were we were miles ahead. So yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering primary season in Texas, and it is important to remember that voting is not just about voting in the general election, but also participating in every level of government from the local level up. The founding fathers, including the elections of senators via state house appointment, as a means for keeping the connection from the local level all the way up to the nation's capital. Since the adoption of the 17th Amendment, that connection has been severed. Please, before you vote, perform your due diligence and research your local candidates to ensure they truly share your fundamental principles and views. This is Keisha Carson. God bless and good night. Carrie, anything else to add? Well, since you are probably already at our website, nottoolateshow.com, y'all feel free to poke around and check out some of Hank's blogs. Do not forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Soundscriber on your iPhone or iPod. And please hang out with us on YouTube. You, we can be found at all of these places with our handle, Not Too Late Show. Yay, another NTLS's history. 